All right, for the second part of segment one, our second video for today, we're going to talk about character defects. Now, if you've played games, let's say like uh, World of Darkness, for example, you could take uh, flaws and... Well, I forget what the other flaws enhancements, I think they're called. I forget. Anyway, you can take flaws for your character in order to get yourself a few extra points to maybe have some more ability, but you have to suffer through some negativity with your character. Like you got a limp or you're forgetful or you're weaker or whatever it happens to be. Uh, well, you can do that also in absolute power. You can put defects on your character that give you extra points to spend elsewhere to, again, make the character you want. For example, Professor Xavier probably has some sort of defect that says he's wheelchair-bound, right? But because of that, he added a bunch more points to his noggin, and now he has superpower, you know, mental power. <laughs> so, so that's kind of how those are used. And uh, let's read and get into this in just a second. Of course, like, subscribe, share if you want more Absolute Power or any other game that we cover, or check our back catalog of various games. Ooh, I have kind of a super secret announcement that I can make for the live stream folks after this video is over. So if somebody reminds me, I'll bring it up. And of course, you can donate to us on PayPal, on Ko-Fi, and some people say that Streamlabs isn't working. I don't know. Check it out. I, as, from what I see, it's working, but I don't know. So, oops, I already did that. So let's put that on the screen and let's go into the book. Oh, how about if I present it? I said, if you hang out after this video and you want to know, I wouldn't call it a super secret announcement because it hasn't been uh, guaranteed yet, but a uh, little announcement that I didn't give on Friday, but uh, I think I can give, uh, I can give today. People are going to be like, and who cares? Uh oh, what's going on here? Why won't you? 153. Enter. Thank you. Character defects. Here we go. Defects are disadvantages through which your character must suffer in order to overcome the hardships of day to day life. Defects serve as an excellent and sometimes comical role playing opportunity and offer interesting plot hooks for your game master to use during adventures. They should only impede your character to a limited extent, though, and are not intended to totally negate their many abilities. If assigned to items, defects indicate built in flaws or drawbacks that make it more difficult to use or render less effective than ideal. Carefully consider the number of defects that burden your character. One to five defects, five, wow. One to five defects is normally appropriate since your focus should be on the capabilities of your character rather than the disadvantages. Additionally, it should be rare to assign a multitude of defects above one rank due to the restrictive nature. <laughs> My characters share a defect. I like that. I like that. I'm putting that on the screen now. All of my characters share a defect. The player. Oops, zoom in here. All right, defect ranks. Defects have a negative point cost that give back character points to your character. Uh, Chris Preacherman, uh, that drawing is going to be on the vet, the 24 hour Veterans Day live stream. That's when that will all happen. All three of those games will be given away on that live stream. And I'll make sure that the announcement is very clear for everyone to see. So, good question. Uh, defects that do not inflict... Oh, so hold on. Defects or have negative point cost to get back to character. Uh, depending on how severely the defect will impact the character's life. Defects that do not inflict a significant disadvantage are not worthy of any negative points. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll actually read the parenthetical. Here. Such as a weakness to bullets made from the ice... Uh, from the ice of not dwarf planet. Pluto is a planet. I stand by that. <laughs> I'm Jerry from Rick and Morty. Pluto is a planet. Dang it, the Plutonians didn't grab me. Uh, <laughs> uh, from Pluto. Yeah, I, yeah. obviously, I, is that really going to be an issue here? No. It's easy to think of defects as negative attribute levels that hinder rather than help a character. That is a great way to think about it. Defects are therefore categorized into three groups, depending on how much they reduce the final point cost of the character. Lesser defect reduces the final cost of your character by one, two, or three points. Greater defect by two, four, six, or serious defect by three, six, or nine. Yes, only a Capellan believes in science. You are correct. 
400 scientists overrode 40,000 scientists. I just want you to remember that. Uh, <clears throat> typically, only defects associated with character and item sizes other than medium, such as awkward size for items only. So awkward size would be like something like, oh, I can't hold this thing. Or a Final Fantasy sword, right, that nobody should be able to actually wield. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the sword's bigger than the person and it's this wide you know that would be like an awkward de uh, defect uh so inept attack inept defense and unique defects can exceed 10 ranks so only defects associated with character and item sizes other than medium can exceed 10 ranks got it Unused point. If after assigning a few defects, your character's total character point cost is now less than the number of points you were assigned by the GM, you have three offense. You can increase your benefits. You can return to previous character creation steps and assign additional stats, templates, or attributes. And this is why, you know, sometimes you can't build the character just right in order, right? Sometimes you get to a point like, oh, wait, hold on. Now I'm going to do defects, and now I got to go back and add or subtract more points there. You know, character creation is kind of a... a, a what do, you, what do you call it? A flowchart process. So you're gonna you're gonna be going back and forth. And this is what most re, most people use defects for is to get more points for other abilities that they wanted. It could also be for story purposes. You know, I want my character to be wheelchair bound. I want my character to be hyper angry. I want my character to uh, I, I don't know uh, be addicted to some sort of drugs or something. Yeah. Uh, at unknown elements, you can assign the unused points to the unknown power, which allows the game master to assign hidden abilities to you that are appropriate for your role in the game storyline. This is an interesting one. You lose a little bit of agency in this one, but it can be interesting. I'm not saying this is great. I'm also not saying it's bad. I am saying that this is a good tool. I'm glad it's in the game for people who want to do this. You know what? Let's just see how the story... Yeah, I, I spent 100 of my 125 points. I don't know what I want to do with those last 25 points. Let's just see how the game shapes out. And then either you as the player, like, oh, this would be a great time for something to manifest. Or the game master says, hey, this would be a great time for something to manifest. So, uh, You can save the unused points for future consideration and allocate them at the appropriate time, as I just stated. All right, appropriate defects. Defects include both normal character flaws and some that are more appropriate for more than human characters or equipment. Most defects are appropriate for all characters with the following exception. Achilles heel, awkward size, bane, involuntary change. <laughs> Was that uh, like a werewolf? And vulnerability. These defects are most applicable to non-human or superhuman characters as well as to items. Okay, defects and dual identities. If a character maintains a dual identity, some of his defects may not affect him in one of the identities. For example, a masked vigilante may be wanted by the police on murder charges, the wanted defect. But the alternate identify, uh, identity may be respected member of Empire City's business elite. So when in costume, you're wanted. So it only affects you when you're wanted. But when you're in, you know, doing your day-to-days, nobody knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. So uh, you, know, you just get along just fine. In these instances, the character will receive fewer points back from the defect. Right, because it's not affecting you constantly. It's only affecting you at certain times. That makes sense. If either the character's normal or secret identity, but not both, suffers from a defect, the value of the defect is worth one rank less. For example, if a character's secret identity has the magnet defect, at minus three points, it's only worth minus two points to the character, uh, though it functions at minus three points. So it's still going to function at that worst level, but it's going to only give back two points. In this way, single identity defects function in a similar way as attribute enhancements. If both identities suffer from the identical defect at the same time or different point values, use the one that returns the greatest number of points. Interesting, okay. If a character only has one identi identity, the defects return points as normal. Okay. That makes sense. And here are... Do I have a paragraph down here? Nope, not going to read the red. So, whole ton of defects that, uh, that you can get. We'll, we'll get a couple of them. Ooh, no healing. We're going to see what no healing is. Let's see. Uh, let's start at the top. Anything that's just really, really interesting. Uh, confined. 
Okay. Um, yeah, let's. I want to look at confined because I don't know what it is. Confined. Uh. No healing. I kind of want to look at phobia as well. It's a pretty common one, but I want to see how this game handles. So we'll look at phobia. Yeah. And then maybe skeleton in the closet, just because I want to see how this game handles that. So there we go. So confined, no healing, phobia, and skeleton in the closet. Hopefully I remember that. I should write it down, but I'm not going to. Let's look at confined. What is confined? This is a serious defect. It's maximum, man. Three, six, and nine. This defect prevents the character or item from leaving a narrowly defined area. Oh, this may re represent an undead villain, villain that is cursed to haunt a particular place, an android that is programmed to follow a specific guard route, or someone under house arrest or forbidden to leave the country. Country seems kind of big. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. That'd be a three-point. Got it. Okay, that'd be the three-point version. I would be careful if I was a game master. If your setting, your campaign is only going to take place in Empire City, I probably wouldn't allow this. It's up to you. I'm just saying. Wow, it goes from a 100-kilometer radius down to one-kilometer radius. Wow. And then down to a 100-meter radius. Okay. All right, let's... Uh, no healing was the next one. Inept. Brrr, oop, no healing. I'm guessing this means you can't be healed, but let's see. Characters do not retain lost health points through normal recovery rules. Okay, so this isn't like you can't be healed by, say, you know, magical or psychic healing or whatever. This is, you just don't heal. Rather, this could be like for robots, right? A robot doesn't heal. You have to be prepared. Rather, the player and game master work together to determine the conditions under which health points are returned and how quickly they recover. Only under the full moon can you heal. Examples of such special conditions include bathing in a specific rejuvenation pool. Oh, you're Darth Vader. <laughs> Returning to the mechanic shop for repair. There you go. You're the uh, Far Verona robot. Anybody who knows that, good on you. I, I don't like the dude, but that game master there, I'm not going to mention his name. I do know what it is, but uh, he did nothing wrong in that instance. Nothing wrong. Nothing. And we're moving on. Uh, undertaking specific purification rites. Meditating to unleash the character's consciousness. Eating a special plant. Da, 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 or animal. Engaging in a particular physical activity. This defect is most appropriate for non-biological life forms that are repaired instead of healed, but may also apply to organic characters that must undertake specific steps before healing. Okay. All makes sense. Got nightmares. That's horrible. Phobias. I did say phobia, right? Yeah. This is a lesser defect. A phobia is a fear, often irrational. And I'm going to give you an example of this in a moment. A lot of you have heard the story I'm going to tell, but I'm going to tell it again for people who look at in this game. Because um, I have a phobia. And I want to explain how it works so that, because uh, some people just think it's like, oh, get over it, or oh, oh uh, be afraid, or oh, how can you do this? You know, whatever. I mean, on both sides of the fence. Like, that's not a phobia because you weren't really afraid, or uh, that's not a phobia. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. A phobia is a fear, often irrational, of an event, object, or person that can limit the character's choice of actions. Avoiding situations that could trigger the phobia may take a high priority in the character's life. Note that a phobia that, is effect that effectively cripples the character with fear does not add constructively to the role-playing experience. So the point there is you're not supposed to turn the character into uh, just a, a, a ball in the fetal position anytime this happens. It should have some other type of negative effect. So. I am afraid of heights. I don't know why, just him. And the story I'm going to tell is about going up in the Eiffel Tower. I climbed up the Eiffel Tower. No real problems. I didn't go like to the burgeoning edge of, you know, uh, of looking out. Yeah, I kind of stayed back a little bit. Right? I've also gone camping in the Sandias where my friends would sit on, on the edge of the mountains, you know, with their legs going, you know, these cliff faces with legs. And I'd be like, that's great. I'm glad you're over there. <laughs> so as we're going up the Eiffel Tower, we get higher and higher and, you know, I'm uncomfortable, but I'm fine. Then we want to go up in that stupid little elevator to the spire. Now, my wife is five foot nothing. 
I am five nine, a little over five nine. And I don't know what I weighed at the time, but we'll go with you know, my current weight about one eighty five. And I'm hanging on to her five foot nothing form for dear life as we're going up. Okay, I nothing I could do about it. I'm freaking out. No, I'm not. I'm not like upsetting other other people there, but I'm freaking out like internally. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. God. I am perfectly safe. I got metal around me, metal below me, metal above me. Uh, I mean, the elevator itself, make of that what you will. It's not the elevator that was the issue. But, you know, I'm just saying I'm in this structure that even if I were to fall down the stairs, and I'll get to more about that in a moment, I am, I'd be caught. There's a wire mesh there. There's, I don't even, if I remember correctly, there's wire mesh going all the way up too. So there's like no way you can even jump off the thing. But I'm freaking the hell out. Now, that doesn't mean I'm like, oh, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. Hear me out. When we finally got you know up there, we saw our thing like, hey, this is great. Yeah, we're seeing our thing. Hey, 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 can we go down now? Um, we go down. We're back on the, the top platform. And now we make our way down. And we're walking down. I am shaking like I am epileptic. I'm laughing at myself, so it's okay. Go ahead and laugh at me. I'm laughing at myself. People are seeing me as they're walking up and I'm we're walking down. My legs like trying to get to the next step. Trying to get to the next step. You okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm scared of heights. Everything's great. No matter what my brain was saying about you can't fall. You can't hurt yourself. It didn't matter. I was shaking like an like an, like, like I said, I was like I was having epileptic fit. Literally until I got off the last step. That last step isn't even a full step. It's like half a step. And I hit terra firma. Then I was fine. That is basically the definition of a phobia. I couldn't control it. I was laughing at my... Don't get me wrong. I'm laughing at myself because my rational brain is saying, this is stupid. Why are you afraid? But inside, I'm like, I could die. I could fall. I could, you know. So there's like, there's like a little internal war going on. I'm looking at everything going, this is stupid. <laughs> Why am I afraid? And my body's like... Bleh. That's the point of a phobia. It isn't like, oh, I just want to be afraid right now. No, it, it's uncontrollable. So hopefully that that explains <laughs> that gives you a little bit of an explanation of like the fear of heights. Now I would say that's a one point fear of height. Now what what are some things that it's done for me? I don't like climbing on my roof. I freak out when I have to do it. I, I don't even I don't even climb on the roof of my shed. Screw that. I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Um. You know, I'm I'm uncomfortable in ladders, even when I'm only a couple of steps up. Uh, flying does not bother me at all because I think because I'm walking on the plane or something. But you get the idea that there are things that this would prevent me from doing or really cause hesitation for me to do in life. Uh, so I'd probably give myself a one, maybe a two, depending on on the the setting. I doubt a three because I wasn't like nope, 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 not going up, not going up, nope, holding on to every handrail that there was, uh, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, but that's that's how you can use the phobia in the game. Like you're noticeably uncomfortable. It's noticeably if I if I tried if I had a firearm with me at that point and I had to defend myself, I probably would have shot the ceiling, the floor, person over there. <laughs> like, I don't think I would have been hitting the person in front of me. At least not easily, because I was seriously, man. Like do, 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 do. so, uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully that explains it. So let's let's move on to the uh, to the next next one. And then I'll take a look at chat. Uh, red tape, reduced damage, sensory impairment. What did I say the last one was going to be? Oh, skeletons. There we go. Wow, that's long. Okay, I'm not reading it. I don't want to read something that long. I'll pause it for you to read, though. Uh, well, I'll, how about this? I'll read just the first paragraph. The character has a dark secret. Exposure of the secret could cause harm to the character in the form of public humiliation, loss of a job, shunning from teammates, arrest, injury, even death. The point rank of this defect is based on the severity of the consequences if the secret is revealed. The secret must be important enough that the character will actively take steps to keep others from learning it. If the skeleton is ever revealed, the character will suffer the associated consequences, and the GM could replace it with the appropriate defects worth at least as many points as Skeleton Closet. You know, maybe you had a criminal past. Um, 
you know, maybe you're uh, doing a Ponzi scheme. You're, you're Bernie Madoff. Uh, uh, maybe you murdered somebody. Uh, whether, you know, maybe you did, <laughs> maybe you R worded somebody, you know? Yeah. You don't want that stuff getting out. So I get it. Okay. So, but you get the idea now for defects and uh, we're not, like I said, we're not going to read all of those. Just put this over here. Do do do. All right. So what, uh, all right. Oh, what nonsense are you guys saying about Pluto? This is bullshit right here. hundred percent bullshit. No, Pluto, just because it has an eccentric orbit and has, spends like one minute of its life in, in the Oort cloud a little bit. Uh, Ceres is not a planet, although I would be more apt to call Ceres a planet. It literally exists in the asteroid belt. Sorry. You know, uh, Pluto's a planet. People can get over it. Everybody wants to make all these dumb little distinctions. They don't need to make distinctions. We find, find planet X out there somewhere if that ever happens and it's out in the Oort cloud. Are we going to call it Oort object? No, it's going to be a damn planet. I don't care how big it is. So, um, do, 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 do. I'm of the opinion you shouldn't get more points for a defect. Really? That's an interesting take. So you don't think that a negative impact on the character that actually has a game negative impact shouldn't apply to the character? I mean, I, I would argue, well, then I don't want it to negatively impact my character in, in a game sense. Uh, so that's an interesting take. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see would storm for x-men be two or three with your claustrophobia i don't know enough about comic books i i'm not a comic book guy you'd have to ask heathen dog that one all i know storm from is uh the uh the 80s cartoon did halle berry play storm in like a live action movie i don't remember So, all right. Uh, Min Maxine can make a character absolutely useless in many situations. Balance with some specialized power skills gives better depth and interesting play. Yeah, I always believe in the term viable. Just make the character viable. Uh, you know, and and work with the game master. You know, when I was younger, I used to make a lot of characters on my own, or or allow my players to make characters on their own. I don't do that anymore. No, we all make our characters together. You know what they now call session zero? We didn't call it back in the. I actually like the term session zero. It's one of the let's we'll just say modern inventions of of gaming that I like is the session zero. Um, we just called. Hey, you want to come over and make characters and for the new campaign I'm going to run? Yeah, sure, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, at that point, you know, we talk about the campaign. We talk about, you know, what, what's going on. Sometimes we do it this class and then do it at uh, you know, after school. And then, you know, like when I was in the Air Force, you know, I, I might talk to somebody about it while I'm at work or we'd be hanging out in the dorms like, hey, you know, I think I want to you know, run a campaign that does this or, you know, change our campaign around to do that, you know, whatever. But uh, now with the whole session zero thing, just make characters together and then you can kind of see what's going on. Also, it'll help people fill roles that might be left open if you care about that or you guys can talk about like are you sure you want to play this D&D campaign where there are no clerics yeah okay cool I'll run it <laughs> like are you sure you want to allow this this guy who insists that he's going to play uh, a goblin uh Uh, what's that down there? Uh, okay. I'll have to deal with that. Uh, so anyway, Air Force much is explained. I know, we actually have brains. We need more than a ninth grade education. Actually, that was the thing about the Air Force, man. <laughs> it's like, when I was in, in the 90s, like, just remember, in the Air Force, you're required to have a ninth grade education. I'm like, I'm not sure that's something that we should be promoting. <laughs> so... Like, like just to, even if it does make us smarter, uh, which I don't think it did, than the other services. <laughs> just like, oh, not sure. That's the ASVAB wasn't. Uh, as somebody who didn't know anything about mechanics, I still got a ninety nine in mechanics. Uh, you know, on the ASVAB. So, uh, 
Thank you very much for the $5 CPK. It says Storm would be a two. Well, there you go. That answers the question. <laughs> All right. Uh, anywho, I'll leave that. Uh, my thoughts on defects. Okay, I'll read this last one. Uh, my thoughts on defects. Uh, if it's severe, then it should be reflected through stats. Okay, so through body, mind, or soul. Maybe even a required check on an action or power. If it's more role-playing defect than it should be. Boop. Rewarded by the GM for the player. Okay. I mean, I don't... I don't I'll just say, I don't agree, but I get your point. I get your point. At least, I don't agree in the... Uh, in terms of Bessem or, or sorry, Bessem absolute power, uh, or uh, champions and hero system, I don't agree there. Can't speak to GURPS like I said uh, previously. Anything else? I think I do agree with you, if that makes sense. So hopefully, so I think it'd be situational in my case. But I get what you're saying. All right. All right. Well, with that, we'll leave it there. Uh, that's all it's going to be for Absolute Power Day. I'm going to hang out with you guys for a little bit. Uh, for the people in the live stream, I'm going to hang out with you guys for a little bit. We'll chat since Seething Dog's not here for a short time. And then I think I'm going to call it early today because, you know what, I get to do that. Put all these videos together to pop out later this week. They will probably go live on Tuesday and Thursday like normal. But, uh, please, if you like these videos, uh, the best thing you can do is leave a comment. I don't leave your favorite emoji. Tell me what city. No, don't tell me a city you live in. I don't care. That's also doxing yourself. Um, you know, so like, like, I put jibber. Uh, I don't. Does that count? I don't care. Just throw something in the comment section there. You know, if you especially if you watched it this far, gave us that watch time. That's awesome. But uh, check us out. Check out our other. You know, we covered Bessem a few years ago. Mark McKinnon even popped on the show and and yelled at us. <laughs> <laughs> he was right though i hate i hate admitting when i'm wrong but he was right on that one so you can check out our our best some coverage from like four years ago i think it was or anything else that we've gotten i look forward to talking to everybody in the next video